So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is the National Girls Collaborative Project National Webinar, Meet the NGCP Youth Advisory Board. Before we hear from our speakers, I'm going to share some information about the National Girls Collaborative Project. So thank you so much for joining us. And here we are today for the Meet the NGCP Youth Advisory Board. The vision of the National Girls Collaborative Project is to support and create science, technology, engineering, and mathematics experiences that are as diverse as the world we live in. To do this, NGCP connects, creates, and collaborates with a network of advocates to promote equity and transform STEM for all girls and youth. NGCP exists today because STEM, many STEM experiences continue to lack diversity. Many young people do not identify with the field. To create change, our work empowers providers, educators, leaders, and youth themselves. NGCP believes that STEM skills can be acquired by anyone and fostered in everyone. Our initiatives build confidence and create a community of lifelong STEM activators. Through the power of collaboration, we spark curiosity and develop a passion for STEM. We share resources and solutions with a coalition of leaders via our website, newsletters, online databases, social media, and webinars like this one. NGCP also strengthens the capacity of programs by producing and sharing exemplary practices, research, and program models. When programs are stronger and more sustainable, girls and youth are better served. We distribute these resources in accessible formats such as train the trainer programs, partnerships, and online platforms. And finally, we leverage our network of girls serving STEM programs, advocates, and youth so that together we can create the tipping point for gender equity in STEM. The National Girls Collaborative Project engages in many activities virtually and nationally, as well as through local collaboratives. NGCP partners with organizations to scale and deliver content such as the Leap Into Science National Network in partnership with the Franklin Institute, and the Million Girls Moonshot in partnership with STEM Next and the Mott After School State Networks, serving hundreds of educators via local, large local networks. NGCP is also working with Lida Hill Philanthropies and has launched the If Then Collection, a digital library housing photos, videos, and other media of women in STEM fields. These media are available at no cost. NGCP manages the Connectory, the largest national database of STEM opportunities. The Connectory also provides a way for program providers to connect and collaborate with each other. Fab Femmes is an international database of female role models from many STEM fields. They're passionate about the work they do and ready to connect with programs. We offer regular webinars such as this one focused on research and exemplary practices to help our network grow and thrive. And locally, state collaborative leadership teams offer convenings, providing professional development, mini grants for innovative projects when funding is available, as well as distributing their own regular newsletters spotlighting local resources. The National Girls Collaborative Project has been partially funded by the National Science Foundation since 2002. We began as the Northwest Girls Collaborative Project focused in Washington and Oregon. And then as we presented our collaboration model to others, we were invited to expand across the United States. While NGCP programs and partners are in every state, we have 33 collaboratives serving 41 states facilitating collaboration between 42,500 organizations who serve 20.2 million girls and 10 million boys. And with that, we are joined today by my colleague Kelly Reyna and several members of our Youth Advisory Board. Kelly Reyna is the STEM Program Specialist and manages the Youth Advisory Board. She received her MA from Arizona State University in Evolutionary Anthropology and has a strong background in scientific research, specifically in comparative and developmental psychology. Kelly is passionate about promoting equity in STEM and has worked at the Children's Creativity Museum and San Francisco Zoo prior to joining NGCP. Now I'll hand it over to Kelly to introduce the board members who are joining us today. Thank you, Marissa. So today we have four Youth Advisory Board members joining us from across the country. First, we have Christine. Christine's a high school senior from Georgia. She's part of her school's Girls Who Code Club and a creative director for Reinvented Magazine. She loves spreading STEM to other girls. In the future, Christine hopes to pursue a career in computer science or engineering. Next, we have Divya. 
Divya is a senior in high school from Northern Virginia. She's an advocate for gender equality in STEM and works with local and national programs to bring awareness, create resources, and develop programs. Divya started a club which works with elementary school students, conducts workshops, and is collaborating with companies such as Northrop Grumman. Additionally, the club has advocated for bills supporting this cause by informing senators and policymakers at Capitol Hill. Divya is interested in the intersection between STEM, specifically computer science, and business to create solutions for social issues. Next, we have Lindsay. Lindsay is a high schooler from Wisconsin. Lindsay's always liked STEM, specifically engineering. Recently, she's been really interested in quantum physics and nanotechnology and she hopes to pursue these interests in college and as a career. Lindsay loves encouraging girls in STEM on a larger scale and also loves working locally at her school's STEM Girls Club. And last we have Megan. Megan's from Northern Virginia and she's mainly interested in computer science and hopes to pursue that passion in college. Since she was little, Megan's always been involved with STEM in school and through extracurricular activities. Megan's goal is to empower young women to explore STEM in a less daunting way by providing valuable learning opportunities. I'll now turn it over to our panel to give an introduction on the NGCP Youth Advisory Board. We'll start with Christine. So as Kelly introduced, we are part of the Youth Advisory Board, which is a group of 22 high, schools, high schoolers from all across the nation with a, with a variety of STEM interests and backgrounds. And our goal as the board is to provide feedback and inform future directions. And our board even provides unique opportunities aimed towards leadership and growth, like virtual events like this one, Fab Femmes, and social hours. Next, I'll pass it on to Divya. We currently have an application process, which is on our website. It is currently closed, but it may open again in the fall. And once a member is invited into the advisory board, each member submits a bio to be placed on the Youth Advisory Board website. Members must attend our monthly meetings, and we have a Discord server where they can ask questions outside of our meetings, such as resources, programs, or just get to know each other. Members must get involved with at least one project a year, but most of our members definitely choose to do more. I will pass on to Lindsay. So as Sylvia mentioned, we have monthly meetings. And recently, our meetings have been run by our co-chairs of the Youth Advisory Board. Um, so at the beginning of every meeting, we start out with a check-in question, which is just a question asked by one of the members in order to get people talking and to get comfortable. And after that, anyone who has participated in any NGCP activities in the last month will just talk a little bit about that and we'll discuss any NGCP initiatives and sometimes give feedback on any projects. Like right now, we're working on NGCP 20th anniversary. Um, and at the end of each meeting, we typically share any highlights in the members' lives at the moment. So I will pass it on to Megan. And so we have done a various different like projects. And one of them is actually our town hall series, which is run by girls. And it's a virtual event where we invite women in STEM, um, STEM role models to speak, to speak to our advisory panel about different sub subjects about like robotics, math, marine biology, and more. And they answer questions that are um, asked by the youth advisory board. And girls across the country are invited to come learn from the role models and ask any questions that they have. And this is a great way to just get some information on different careers if you want to explore them and just to ask any questions about um, their interest in STEM and how they got to where they are today. And then we also have STEM Without Boundaries. This is also a virtual event, but this one's actually run by the high school students, and it's aimed to getting elementary schoolers interested in STEM. And the Youth Advisory Board is actually the panel and um, answers any questions by the elementary school students. And this is a great way for the elementary students to ask any questions that they have and for the Youth Advisory Board to inspire um, younger kids to get involved in STEM. And I'll pass it back to Kelly. Thank you so much to our panel for that introduction. I'm going to now just start us off um, with some questions. So anyone can feel free to answer and jump in. 
Why did you decide to join the Youth, the youth Advisory Board? So I guess I can start us off. So I actually heard about the Youth Advisory Board um, from this organization called Reinventing Magazine. And I read this blog post about the board. And um, I think I was like a freshman in high school at the time and I was just getting into STEM. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to be able to find like other girls who have similar interests as me and also kind of just spread STEM to other girls. Um, and I'm so glad that I ended up reading that blog because now I've been on the board for a few years and I've been able to like participate in so many events that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. Yeah, similar to Christine, I also joined um, the advisory board because I had heard about NGCP and I had joined it because I really wanted a place to meet other girls who were working towards similar causes that I was interested in. And also they were all so diverse from all over the US and I could hear different perspectives, which was really cool to be able to connect um, with our different experiences, but at the same time, um, have very similar experiences as well and being able to use that to work making uh, them have more diverse diversity. So I came across advisory board when I was looking for different kind of like STEM opportunities. And I was like really interested in this advisory board just because they were doing like a lot of virtual opportunities. And I feel like it allowed me to be exposed to many different um, variety of STEM, not just kind of like STEM in a broad subject, but also like specifically about what my career I wanted to do with like computer science. So I think this was a great way to like collaborate with different people who had like the same interest in me to be able to see what they were doing and kind of um, work with different people from around the world in a virtual setting while also like gaining different experiences by like talking to um, people who've done who are in this career now for STEM topics and just different volunteer opportunities to get more involved in my STEM career. Um, for me, I kind of live in a more rural area. So I didn't have a lot of opportunities, especially at my school, to be really involved in STEM at a younger age. Um, so when I got older and I like wanted to get more involved um, and I heard about it, so I really wanted to get involved. Um, and I thought it would be a really good opportunity to um, have resources for mentors and um, kind of getting to know other girls who are interested in the same things I am and to get to know other like um, older women in what I want to go into. So thank you all so much for that. Um, we'll get into our next question. What has been your favorite thing you've done or worked on during your time with the Youth Advisory Board? My favorite project was um, the Plan of Foundation Ambassador. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so basically for that project, we worked with the Plan of Foundation as almost a subgroup. And we were able to offer them advice and feedback on what they thought young kids, um, they were printing a book at the time. So what they thought uh, would connect with the next generation or younger kids. So obviously as teens, we were closer to that demographic, but it was really cool to be able to use our experiences and almost advise the company how to reach our demographic. So that was really cool. And I also got to meet um, some really cool scientists, which was a really great opportunity. Yeah, I was actually gonna say like the exact same thing. Um, but if I weren't to say um, the Planets Foundation, I would probably say like our town hall events. Um, I feel like it's just been a really cool experience to be able to like hear from other um, women who have careers in STEM. And then also just to be able to be a part of an event like that. Um, I think also it has given me like a lot of experience like talking in like meetings and just like being more comfortable, like talking to other people, um, which has helped me build like a lot of skills that I feel like will be really useful in the future. And then just like hearing other like women's perspectives in general has been like um, a really good experience. So for me, I was also going to say the town hall meetings, but if I didn't, it would have to be the STEM without boundaries events that we do, because it was kind of like 
a different way of kind of connecting with elementary schoolers. I know it's kind of hard to do it in person. So with this virtual opportunity, it was a great way to just kind of, I know whenever I was at a young age, I, we, I didn't really like talk to like older high school students about STEM. So I think this was like a great opportunity for them to ask any questions that they had for high school students, while also like for us, the panel to be able to like give them any guidance and also kind of just inspire them to explore STEM more and just make it less daunting to them. Thank you all. Okay, what advice would you give to someone who is currently running or thinking of running a youth advisory board on their own? Um, I think one of the most important things is creating a comfortable atmosphere and environment. Um, because I'm a very like, shy person. I don't like speaking in front of people. I kind of struggle with that. Um, so having that kind of informal, uh, getting to know each other, being a little more familiar with the people that you're working with is really helpful. And it's kind of um, helped me gain the confidence to speak. And um, even in outside of um, the board, I've gained a lot of um, public speaking skills, so. Yeah, along the same lines, I would also say try to get um, your youth uh, getting to know each other and really connecting with each other outside of the meetings as well because I think that really builds a community and excites people to continue um, working towards the board and coming to the meetings because you know it's gonna be a good time. And also I would say taking feedback very regularly uh, to be able to integrate like youth's ideas into how you work for meetings too and being open to, open to change. Um, because I remember when Kelly had first come to run the board, there, we kind of changed a couple things and it was really cool to be able to take our feedback and um, make our meetings more efficient and fun. Great, thank you. And I wanna get a little bit deeper into that too. Um, I know it was mentioned, it's, it's important to have a comfortable atmosphere where you can, um, you know, feel free to open up and speak in. Is there, do you have any tips for how to create that atmosphere? I would just say, I know um, when, whenever we start our meetings, we just kind of talk about kind of what we're interested in, what we did um, kind of between each meetings. And I think that's a great way to bond, kind of just see what everyone's doing outside of STEM. And, I think just having like icebreaker rounds is really good, especially in the beginning of our meetings and also how we connect through Discord. I think this is a great way to just kind of also like connect outside of the meetings whenever it's just through like different opportunities or kind of just asking for advice. So I think that's one of the ways that we've all kind of gotten to know each other better. better. Well, thank you all so much. I'm going to now pass it to Marissa, who will be taking questions from the audience. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I'm going to do a quick screen share again, just so that folks can see here sort of how we'll go about this audience Q&A. So you'll see here that um, Yes, I am sharing my screen, great. Okay, <laughs> you'll see here that uh, we will take questions from the chat. So some fantastic questions have already been entered into the chat, but because we're all here together um, via Zoom meeting, those of you in the audience also have the ability to unmute and turn on your videos and ask your questions live. So we ask that you use the hand raise capability Oh, I see someone already doing it. Fantastic to be able to ask those questions live if you're comfortable doing so. So I'm going to go right over to Susan who has their hand raised. Go ahead, Susan. Hi, and I'll turn on my camera so you can- Oh, fabulous. See. I, I'm not dressed for, for um, professionalism, but- Oh, you know, no worries. We love to just see who's here. It's great to see I, your I face. I haven't dressed professionally in the last 
well, I'm going to take that back. Anyway, so thank you so much, Youth Advisory Board. Really appreciate you taking the time to share with us um, just your interest and your background and such. My, my question is, um, how did you hear about this opportunity? Um, you know, I know there's lots of different ways to communicate with youth and, and get their attention. So how did you find out about this? And I'll turn myself back on mute and stop my video. Thank you. Um, I believe I had heard of the Youth Advisory Board just through NGCP's website. So I was researching STEM organizations, um, gender equality or more diversity organizations in general. And I believe there was a tab, maybe a get involved tab or something like that. And I just kind of followed um, how I could get involved to the Youth Advisory Board and I just reached out. Yeah, I had this similar experience too. I was just searching of different kinds of STEM organizations or STEM volunteer opportunities and I came upon the NGCP website. And from there, I'm pretty sure you can select kind of like what state or location nearby that you're in. And that's where I came through like the advisory board and there was like kind of like a contact information and just like, so for like an email and just to get to know kind of what the advisory board is and kind of what they do. But I'm pretty sure it was just through kind of, I was just re researching different STEM opportunities and I came upon it. Yeah, I actually touched on this a little earlier, but I read like a blog post um, on this other organization that is also like dedicated to women in STEM. Um, and I think like, I think like the old leader of um, NGCP like wrote that blog post and I kind of read about it and seemed like interested. And then I searched up information on the board and then I decided to apply it from there um yeah so I read a blog post thank, thank you it's so it sounds like you were all pretty self-directed which um says a lot about you all thank you Definitely. I was just going to comment the same thing, Susan. It sounds like you you already knew you had an interest and you were sort of looking for ways to cultivate that interest further and find people who were interested in, in similar things. So you took that initiative on your own, um, which is great to hear. All right. So again, if anybody wants to ask their question live, as Susan did, feel free to use that hand raise feature. But I'm going to take a peek at some of the questions that came in through the chat. Um, we had a question here from Shay asking, how are you able to balance school and the youth advisory board responsibilities? Oh, oh Christine, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, I feel like um, being on the board, we're like so lucky to have Kelly. Like Kelly is like super nice and she's like understanding. So whenever we are not able to like attend a meeting or if we like have something come up, um, she's always really flexible and um, well can like accommodate to like if we have like an exam coming up. Um, and then also since we do only meet like once a month, it's not like too much of a commitment where we have to dedicate like hours to like the board every single week. Um, and then also we can like choose to sign up for certain events. Um, so if we're busier like one month, we might choose not to sign up for as many events. And then if we do have like extra time, um, we can like sign up for more events, which makes it really easy to kind of fit into your schedule. Um, so the great thing about the board is that it's so flexible and that kind of um, can like fit into like anyone's schedule. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I think it's really great how all of our meetings are always the first Wednesday of the month, and we kind of know it's there for the entire year, so we're able to take that time out. And then also we have reminders and emails and uh, summary of the meetings sent out as well, so it's really nice that it's organized and we don't, we don't have to be overwhelmed because we don't know how much time commitment's going to be. 
And for the events, because they're kind of optional, we kind of plan months in advance. So if you're going to do a different like volunteer opportunity or a webinar, then you'll know kind of much more ahead what days that you need to commit to or what days you're rehearsing. So it's kind of like a lot of planning beforehand. So whenever the date comes, you already know which date you're going to um, have to stay. And it usually isn't that much like many rehearsal days and it doesn't take that long. So it's kind of good knowing like kind of to plan ahead and that it's planned months in advance. So whenever the date comes, you already know what's going to be happening. Thank you. Um, we had another important question from Amanda in our audience. How does the Youth Advisory Board interact with NGCP's Board of Advisors? So I'm not sure if Kelly wants to take that one first and then if girls wanna chime in, whatever feels good for you all. Yeah, I might jump in just to, um, to start off this one at least. So with the NGC board, um, we have two really great sponsors who, who work and um, who really support and care about our youth advisory board, one of whom is here today, Shay. Um, and they, what we've started so far is having a th th um, Shay and Siobhan meet with me to discuss some ideas and directions for our board. But we will have them start to get a little bit more involved. As a matter of fact, our other sponsor, Siobhan, just met with our board um, in January. And she just kind of gave an intro about herself and, um, and you know, her career path and everything. Shay is gonna come speak with us at our next meeting or in our March meeting. And they'll also be offering through the year a couple of different professional development opportunities, some kind of um, lessons. For example, Siobhan's gonna come in and talk about how to brand yourself. And so we're just gonna have a couple of little uh, professional development opportunities at our meetings. And, and they're going to help us find some other um, other role models to come in and speak with our board. So I don't know if the, I don't know if those are if our board members want to talk about our youth advisory board members want to talk about what that meeting was like at the beginning of January with Stefan. You, you remember our guest speaker? Yeah, I think it's really cool how. Um, through the NGCP and the board, we're able to um, meet others like Shawan and we're able to ask her questions as well. So though we don't have direct contact with the board, it is nice to be able to um, kind of learn with them and learn through them and get their advice and mentorship. Thank you. Um, let's see, we've had a few other questions coming through in the chat. And Kelly, I saw that you um, did respond to Zoe about the age you need to be to be on the Youth Advisory Board, but I think it might be helpful for folks who might be watching the recording if we vocalize that. Um, could you just share a little bit about the application and how old Youth Advisory members, board members are? Yeah, so our, our youth advisory board is for high schoolers, and um, so so once they graduate, they join our alumni pro program. Um, and our application process it's usually when it is open, it is online um, on the NGCB website on our youth advisory board page, but um, it's closed right now, probably until the fall. Thank you. And then um, Zoe had a, a follow up question, a little bit about like, how does the Youth Advisory Board meet? Do people ever meet in person? Do you have locations in different states or cities? I think I could pass it to the Youth Advisory Board to answer this one. Does someone want to take this one? Yeah, so we currently meet like completely all online. Um, so all of our meetings take place on Zoom. So we have meetings once a month and then um, we all are in the Zoom call and we usually all have like our cameras on so we can still see each other. Um, and since we're all from like all over like the United States, 
it's like difficult to actually meet in person. Um, and then we also have, I know like, I think Divya mentioned this earlier, but we also have like Discord. So we're able to like communicate to each other um, even outside of our monthly meeting. So even thing is digital, um, there's like a lot of ways that we can still like reach out to each other and still like stay close within um, our organization. Thanks, Christine. Um, yeah, so it sounds like the meetings all occur virtually, um, which makes it easy since all the youth advisory board members are kind of all across the US. And I see Emma has her hand raised here. So go ahead, Emma, with your question. Hello, uh, my name is Emma Hagen. I'm calling from Denver, Colorado, and my question's kind of big, but I'd like to hear from each of the youth advisory board members on this. Um, so I'm curious about um, each of your experiences working with students your age from across the nation. So how has that been a benefit to you? Um, what have you learned working with people from different backgrounds um, that are kind of in your age range or whatnot? So just want to hear your experience. Personally, for me, I feel like it's been like super beneficial um, since I like I currently live in Georgia and I feel like where I live, um, it's kind of in the suburbs and there's not really a lot of other girls who are like interested specifically in math and computer science. So being on the board, I'm able to like find other girls who are like similar um, in my similar to my age. Um, who share these interests. So it's really good to be able to like connect to people from different ba different backgrounds. Um, and also um, I feel like just hearing other people's perspectives from all over like the United States has been really like eye-opening, um, especially since I'm like interested in like computer science. Um, you have to deal a lot with like understanding the people you're like coding for or making products for. Um, being able to talk to so many different people has really helped um, me with like understanding other people. Um, I think one other cool thing um, with like being a, being around people my age is that. Um, like other people, other girls that like have or know of other resources or opportunities to um, get involved in other things or like even people with this interest outside of STEM, um, having resources or stuff about like that stuff, you know, having another person to tell you about those things is also really cool. Like different programs, like summer programs or different things that they know of that I don't know, maybe that they're involved with or something, and then they can share it with the entire board, and then you can get involved in those things as well. I agree. It's been really motivating just kind of seeing, I think kind of where I live, it's a lot of like kind of like guys and their opportunities for like computer science specifically. So I think it was really cool just to like talk to people my age or girls and just kind of see what they're doing and kind of just the opportunities, which kind of like has motivated me to want to do like more opportunities too. Cause I feel like you kind of hear about people doing opportunities, but doing it through like advisor board, they're kind of like, I built a like kind of a better relationship with them or a friendship level, which has like pushed me to want to do as what they're doing and kind of just expose myself to more opportunities and just get to know what other people are doing too. I think my favorite part is definitely how supportive everyone is. So we share all of the things that we do and the accomplishments that we've had every month. And it's really nice to be able to have um, a diverse community and like still gets what you're doing and still gets kind of your goals um, and can just build each other up. Thank you. Those were wonderful, wonderful, wonderful answers. I really appreciate hearing from each of you. Thank you for your question, Emma. And um, we, we just, it's such a joy when people turn on their cameras and turn on their mics and it's fun to see who's here with us today. Um, so we have another question here. And I actually think it's a really great follow-up because Divya, you were talking about how when you get together 
um, each month you share about accomplishments and kind of what's going on. But this question is sort of the other side of that. Have you faced any challenges on the youth advisory board or as a board, as a group? And how have you sort of tackled those challenges together? or even an individual challenge that being on the Youth Advisory Board has kind of helped you figure out how to overcome? So I can't think of a very specific example. I would say the community that we've built, um, especially in Discord and connecting with people on the board, maybe outside of meetings has been really helpful. So it's always an open forum at the beginning and end of our meetings. So we have talked about, you know, like, um, struggles in imposter syndrome, or I don't feel like I um, am on the right path, or I'm looking for more opportunities, or anything like that. A lot of the struggles, because we're working towards the same fields and they're all male dominated fields, I feel like we have similar understanding. So, having the open forums and having a place for open conversation, especially about topics that most likely impact us all, has been really helpful. And of course, there's so many different diverse perspectives too, which always helps. Thank you so much. I was just waiting to see if anyone else wanted to add on or chime in, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna just take a quick peek in the chat to make sure we didn't miss any questions that came through. And folks who are in the audience, if you do have a question, um, you can use that hand raise feature. I'm keeping an eye on that as well. Um, so I don't see any more coming through right now, but. I will turn it over to Kelly and continue to keep an eye on the chat and on that hand raise participants feature um, in case any more come up and we can always come back to you. So Kelly's just going to share a little bit more. We've heard from the Youth Advisory Board about how they use Zoom meetings to stay connected and how they use Discord to collaborate, but she will share just a little bit more about how that all kind of comes together to facilitate collaboration and connection. Yeah, so this is something that we really have to focus on because like we were saying, we don't ever meet in person and we're, we're really all across the country from the West Coast to East Coast. And um, so we just have to do everything virtually and connect virtually. So aside from our monthly meetings, we also have started, um, well, we have our Discord um, server, our own private Youth Advisory Board Discord um, with all sorts of different channels. So our members can post about like resources or questions or I'll post like reminders to meetings, stuff like that. And that's a great way for people to just interact um, whenever with whatever. So that's been really good. We also started social hours and these, um, these have been great, but they're, they're just, they're little meetings for our group. So they'll have maybe four or five members attend a social hour where they can just go in and meet on Zoom and just chat for a while. And I don't even attend these ones. These are just for them to be amongst their peers and talk about anything. Um, as I mentioned before, we also have our Youth Advisory Board Alumni Program. So that way when they graduate or, um, or if they have to leave for whatever reason or whatever, they're still connected to us and they can stay in the know. So they've got emails about like big events, like our 20th anniversary, stuff like that. And we also have an Instagram account where we have some really great content from our Youth Advisory Board members. And just to, to add on, that's the Instagram account has sometimes been like a way for youth advisory board members to also kind of engage with the network of, you know, people interested in STEM and to share a little bit about what they do, right? We've had, sometimes had youth advisory boards kind of highlight or do little in, Instagram takeovers and things like that, right, Kelly? Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's a super fun way for them. I mean, they're, they're really great at use, utilizing social media. So... Um, <laughs> That's a really fun, it's a really fun tool. Fantastic. Okay, we did have a question come through the chat 
Um, Zoe is wondering how many times the youth advisory meets, I'm gonna assume in a year, and for how long do those meetings last? And it sounds like you have like a couple of different meetings. You have those social times and then you have the monthly meetings. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how frequently and how long those meetings are? Yeah, um, so we do once a month, we have our monthly meeting, which is just an hour long. I really try to um, you know, appreciate how busy high schoolers are with all their extracurriculars at, um, and schools and exams and everything. So I never keep them over an hour. And um, yes, yeah, so we meet for an hour. And that, that's really the only mandatory thing that they have to do. Our social hours are once in a while for however long they want to last. And um, outside of that, we just, we meet to prep for stuff like this, or maybe meet sometimes like um, a member will meet with me one-on-one -on -one for some reason. Um, so I, I really feel like with our youth advisory board, you, they, they get as much, as much from it as they put into it. And I think a lot of our members really put a lot into it. So. Thank you. And I think I'm going to sort of close out our Q&A section as we get a little bit closer towards the end of our hour together with just one last question that I would love each of the girls to respond to, which is you talked about a little bit about advice you would give to someone who is looking to start their own youth advisory board, but I know you've also done your own work with younger girls and you yourselves have once been, you know, younger, younger girls and youth interested in STEM. What advice might you give a younger person who's interested in STEM? Um, I think I would say always be on the lookout for opportunities. Um, because especially for like middle schoolers, even elementary schoolers, um, there are always you no know, nonprofits holding workshops or resources, um, articles, interviews, clubs at school, and even outside of school. And I think there's so much that isn't displayed out to kids, uh, but just a simple online search can kind of lead you to your next interest or can teach you a lot more about what direction you wanna go. And then once you do that, you get to meet new people and that will also guide you and find mentors. So I think just always being open to looking for your next opportunity is, um, really helpful in growing your interest in meeting people. Um, I would probably say to um, try not to be discouraged to take classes in STEM. I remember when I was younger, I avoided taking classes like in middle school and my earlier years in high school. Um, that were more male dominated and I knew that I would be either one or one of um, the girls in the class <laughs> and I kind of regret that now so I would definitely um, tell them to, to push away those thoughts and take them anyway. I guess kind of building off of that I'd probably say don't be afraid to ask questions, especially like in your STEM classes and just in general, if you have like any mentors or people you look up to. Um, similar to Lindsay, I guess like when I first started taking like STEM specific classes, so like computer science, um, I was usually like one of the only girls in the class. So I always felt like if I asked a question, it would look bad or like, it would look like I was like confused or I didn't know what I was doing. But I really like, if I could go back in time, I really wish I would have asked those questions. Um, just because I feel like I like just totally had the wrong mindset where it's not like um, you're asking a question because you like don't really know what's going on or you're confused, but you're just asking a question um, in order to like learn something or in order to get better at what you're trying to um, learn. So asking questions is always good. Um, and like, don't be afraid to ask out to people you look up to. So if you have like any like STEM role models or just like anyone in general in your life, don't be afraid to ask them any questions or ask like for their advice um, on their like STEM field. 
So I would say kind of just like any interest, even though if it might be slight, just like exploring that field because you might not know if that's something you want to do further. Like even if it's just a small thing or you don't know about a certain career, it's great to like just explore it, like do any extracurriculars or clubs that even if you like might not heard of or kind of just like interest you to join. And also just joining like any workshops, just to kind of get involved and like explore like different opportunities, like different virtual events, kind of like um, kind of anything just to get more exposed to different careers that you might not have heard of before. And also just like understanding how big one like specific field is, like, for example, computer science, you might just think of it as like one field, but there's also many like interdisciplinaries and different like fields within one big field. So I'd say just exploring kind of just exploring specifically what you enjoy and just seeing what you like and you don't like. Thank you all so much. I saw a comment in the chat saying, very inspirational, continue doing these great things. Um, and that is so true. It's, it's really been fantastic to get to hear from all four of you today, representing our National Girls Collaborative Project Youth Advisory Board, um, and from Kelly, who is their, their great leader and manager of the Youth Advisory Board. We thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again and let folks know about a couple of upcoming webinars and events that we have. So these, um, and oh, a quick reminder, this webinar has been recorded and we will post the recording, the slides and the chat transcript um, on our event page for this webinar in the webinar ar archive um, shortly. And so we do have two events coming up, one of which will highlight our fantastic Youth Advisory Board again. Um, on February 8th, we will have folks from the ASTC member museums who were given a grant via the If Then Collection to present how they have used resources from the If Then Collection to enhance programming in their museum. And on March 2nd, we will be hearing again from some members of the Youth Advisory Board as we celebrate National Girls, Girls Collaborative Project's 20th anniversary. So that will be on Wednesday, March 2nd, and we'll be learning about the history of NGCP and learn some of the highs and lows of running a small but mighty NGO for over 20 years, um, as well as just ways to kind of launch a movement and make progress in the space we all work in. And um, my final closing is to Please take a moment if you can and fill out our post webinar survey. Katja just put the link there in the chat. It should also pop up when we close out this meeting today. Um, we always take a look at those survey results. They help us know what topics and information is relevant and of interest to all of you and let us know how these webinars are going. So we really appreciate you taking a moment to fill those out. And with that, we say thank you so much for joining us today. We're ending just a couple minutes early, so everybody gets about 10 minutes left in their day. Um, and thank you. We hope to see you again at another NGCP webinar or event soon. Thank you, everybody.